All right, so this video is going to be about uh, relative motion. Now, we've talked about relative motion before, uh, but this is going to be relative motion uh, that's actually happening in two dimensions. So what we had done before was something like you know, a person moving forward on a train that was moving backwards or a person throwing an object forward when the car is moving forward, that sort of thing. Well, uh, today we're going to take a look at what happens if you throw a... Uh, uh, an object across the car while the car is moving forward. So it's two dimensions, both in the horizontal and the vertical, or in the forward and backward, as well as the left and the right. So we're going to have two motions uh, to take a look at. Uh, so the first example that we're going to take a look at that's on your notes is uh, this idea of having a river, and we are trying to get across the river. Uh, that river is flowing to the right uh, at five kilometers per hour. And we have a little boat, right? Now here's our boat. And that boat is trying to go across the river, and it's traveling at 3 kilometers per hour. Uh, and the idea here is, is, is uh, uh, will it be able to get across the, the river? Uh, and of course it's going to get across the river, but the question is, will it get from uh, this point, point A, to this point, point B? Will it be able to go just straight across the river? Well, we know that the river is going to be taking the boat uh, with it, right? It has a velocity trying to get across the river, but the, the river itself, the water moving in the river, is going to take that, that boat with it. Uh, so that we have a simulation uh, that we have videoed about this, and it has a boat, or a in this case a constant velocity car, trying to go across a river, or in, in this case butcher paper, that is being dragged to to one side. So take a look at this and see if we can figure out what is going on. So what did we see? We saw the boat, or the car in this case, uh, being drugged down the river uh, while it was trying to cross it. So instead of going straight across like we would want it to, it did something like this, where it hit the, the river uh, or the other shore. Uh, some point later. Uh, so this is um, getting into what your notes is calling scenario two. So let's take a look at uh, some of the values that we would uh, see if you, uh, you tried to go across the river. Well, the river is 0.75 kilometers wide. All right, 0.75 kilometers wide, and we could tell from the simulation that the car was always traveling at the same speed as it's trying to go across, so in this case the boat is traveling at 3 kilometers an hour, uh, going at 0.75, uh, or having to go through 7, 0.75 kilometers, so we can figure out a, a time that it would take to get across, and that time would be the distance divided by the velocity. So if we do... Um, distance, which is 0.75, and divide it by the velocity, we get that it would be 0.25 hours. Okay, now how did I know it was this? Well, we know that distance is equal to velocity times time, so time would be distance divided by velocity. Now, why is that important? Well, to get across, uh, it took 0.25 hours, but during those 0.25 hours, we were drugged down the river. Uh, so if we were dr being drugged down the river, well, the river is traveling at five kilometers per hour and we are doing this for 0.25 hours so if we take five and multiply it by 0.25 we would find that it, we can get drugged down the river 1.25 kilometers so this is not a great representation the way I have it right now because it's not very uh, to, to scale so let's see if I can uh, do it a little bit better so for our river there's our river and it is 0.75 kilometers across and we are being dragged down the river 1.25 kilometers so our actual path looks like that well then what was our displacement well our displacement would be the hypotenuse of this triangle that we just created right 0.75 and 1.25 are the legs of the triangle and so our displacement would be the hypotenuse so the hypotenuse you would find using uh, Pythagorean theorem, right? 1.25 squared plus 0.75 squared 
and then take the square root of that, we would find that our displacement is 1.46 kilometers. So that is our actual displacement. Now that displacement has two different components. It has in the uh, x direction, 1.25 kilometers, right, and that's the x direction, and the y direction, 0.75 kilometers. Uh, but our total displacement, and sometimes called a resultant displacement, would be 1.46 kilometers. Let's talk about speeds for a second. Let me switch over to a different color. So our speed, uh, well, it has two parts as well. It was going across the river at 3 kilometers per hour, and it was going down the river at 5 kilometers per hour. So then what is our actual speed? Well, we, there's a couple ways we can do this. We can either do a same tri or similar triangle between the 3 and the 5 going up and over, or we can say, well, we did 1.46 kilometers in a time of 0 0.25 hours. So our velocity would just be 1.46 kilometers over 0 0.25 hours. which would end up being 5.84 kilometers per hour. Well, so what does this uh, represent? So what does this represent, uh, the speed that it's, that it's now boxed, 5.84 kilometers per hour? Well, this is a speed, but this is the speed relative to someone observing on the shoreline. So what does the, shore, the person on the shore see? It sees the boat moving from this point, point A, to this point, point B, uh, traveling this 1.46 kilometers in the 0.25 hours, so this is the speed relative to the shoreline. Okay, uh, this is the speed three and five relative to the water. Right, the water's going at five kilometers per hour. The three kilometers per hour. This is the speed relative to the water. If he was just traveling in still water, he would be traveling at three kilometers per hour. So again, we have this whole idea of okay, well, is, what is it relative to? Is it relative to the water? Relative to the shore? This is the water, and this is the shore. All right, but we know that these uh, these things are vectors. It's a displacement vector, and it's a velocity vector, so it needs to have a direction. So I'm going to go over to a different slide here, so we can clean this up a little bit. Uh, we can say that we have uh, 0 0.75, right? We have a little bit longer, 1.75. Two five, uh, and then our resultant we said was 1.46. So what's our direction? Well, this is the arrow that we're dealing with. It's going from here to here. So we need to have an angle. Well, let's deal with this angle right here. We have all three sides of our triangle, so it doesn't matter what we use. We can use sine, cosine, or tangent. So let's just use cosine. I like cosine. So cosine of that angle is equal to what over what? Well, cosine is adjacent, so it'd be 0 0.75 over hypotenuse, 1.46. Now, we learned in class that in order to get this theta out of the cosine, we have to do the inverse cosine. So theta is the inverse cosine of 0.75 over 1.46. All right, and so you would get an answer of, and this is going to assume that you are in degree mode on your calculator, of about 59 degrees, 59 degrees. Okay, if you were in radian mode, it would give you an answer in radians. It would technically be correct, but uh, we're going to use degrees here. So we have 59 degrees. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, it means that our displacement is 1.46 kilometers at an angle of 59 degrees. Now, uh, 59 degrees, that's great and all. That's an angle. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit uh, better to give more description on that angle. That angle is to the right of the vertical, right? So you can say uh, right of up, or you can say, in some cases, we can do things, something called bearings, which would, if you uh, think of a compass rose, right, north, uh, west, east, south. So this would be east of north. That would be like having a compass rose right here. It's east of that north. Now that's only if you really want to do that or you can just leave it as 59 degrees and most of the time that's fine. 
All right, well, going back to the, the original question, uh, can this boat get all the way across uh, and hit a point that's exactly the o uh, opposite side? Uh, well, it can, but only if it's got uh, a couple of things going for it. So let's take a look at this next simulation. All right, so what do we see? We saw that uh, a boat, or the car, could actually get to a point directly across the river if it angled itself. So if uh, it had some kind of velocity and it angled itself up against the river, then we can say it has two components to it. It's got a component that's going across the river, and it's got a component that's going up the river. Well, if the component that's going up the river, this one, uh, is the exact same but in an opposite direction of the one that's going uh, with the river, like the, the, the water itself, then these would cancel each other out, leaving just the component that is going uh, across the river. So a boat could theoretically go from A to B if it angled itself properly. Now the problem with this boat that is explained in the notes is that it can only reach three kilometers per hour. So even if it was a boat that was directed straight up river, three kilometers per hour, uh, would not be able to cancel out the river's uh, own velocity, which is five kilometers per hour. So this boat would never be able to get uh, straight across A to B. It would uh, always end up going uh, further down, hitting the shoreline further down from B. All right, so um, just to kind of recap here, when we're talking about relative motion, uh, or just motion in general, sometimes we have things going on in the x direction, sometimes we have things going in the y direction, and our actual vector will be taken from the very uh, start to the very end, and a lot of times makes this light, nice little lovely right triangle. And so we have all the different things that we have uh, going for us for right triangles. Sines, cosines, tangents, Pythagorean theorem, all that sort of thing. Displacement's a vector, velocity's a vector, these uh, vectors can, forces are vectors, right? We've already seen forces and angles. So each one of these things can have an X and a Y component that can be put together or taken apart depending on your needs. Uh, so hopefully this has uh, helped get through the notes packet and you can start working on uh, the problems that go with your homework.